Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingle. Sadly I still can't show you the HMS Campbelltown Premium Tier 3 British Destroyer review. Uh, that's still been embargoed despite the fact that the news of the ship is all over the World of Warships portal. Yeah, I know. Reasons. Um, instead, well, I've been playing World of Warships random battles again. Not just the team battles that I was talking about uh, in Mingles with Jingles yesterday. Yes, I have actually been dipping my toe into the random battle luck lottery. And it's actually been fun. I have now unlocked and fully upgraded both the Cleveland and the Auber because I do love my cruisers. And yes, I know they're only tier 6. And yes, I know I have been dragging my arse a bit, but I just love my cruisers. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really love the first game I played in the Cleveland. The Cleveland, of course, tier 6 cruiser. Heavily specialised for anti-aircraft defence. And of course, the first three games I played in the Cleveland, not one aircraft carrier on the enemy team. And the first game I played in the Cleveland, nothing but Tier 8 battleships as far as the eye could see, so that didn't go down too well. But one thing that I did notice while I was playing both the Cleveland and the Atlanta was that, well, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Although, well, that can't be said about the Cleveland. It's definitely not the ship I remember playing back in the closed beta and even the open beta. Um, it's still a good ship, I still like it, but the range of the guns is... Yeah. Uh, the turret rotation speed, it seems slower than I remember. The shots, definitely slower than I remember. You have to give an insane amount of lead to a target at anything over the 10 kilometer range mark. Uh, but I did manage to at least get into a game where there's an aircraft carrier on the enemy team, so I thought, alright, I'll escort this battleship. It's a tier 8 match after all. I, I never seem to get anything but tier 8 matches when I'm in the Cleveland. I've had the most appallingly bad luck with a matchmaker so far. But it's still a decent ship even in a tier 8 match. You just can't go anywhere and do anything alone. So, battleship escort duty. And it doesn't take long before we find ourselves an enemy destroyer. And oh boy. <laughs> this is what the Cleveland is for. Tearing up destroyers. And at this kind of range, the relatively slow velocity of the Cleveland's main battery shells really isn't that much of an issue. Um, all of those enemy warships steaming around the corner ahead of the destroyer, on the other hand, they might be an issue. Destroyer's in the turn, he's obviously trying to get torpedoes away from the other side. It's just making him a bigger target. He's popped smoke, and of course all of those enemy ships in the background, you've got a choice of shooting at a tier 6 cruiser or a tier 8 battleship, they are going to shoot at the tier 6 cruiser. But I can survive this, I just have to kill that destroyer. And now he's dead, he's no longer spotting me, and look at his smoke screen. <laughs> now I'm not detected. Um, the enemy destroyer's smoke screen is actually shielding me from view from all these enemy ships, so... Fire at will, Commander! Now I'm not going to stay hidden forever, but... And I am, of course, going to get the hell out of here. But I'm just going to queue up the armor piercing here because I've got the big fat side of the Miyoko tier 7 cruiser. Very, very nice ship. Waiting for these turrets to get on target. Shots out. Looking good. More shots out. There's the citadels. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. And I am now detected, so I do need a motor and get the heck out of here. But the Cleveland still got it, even in a tier 8 match. Now, while. I originally decided I was going to escort that uh, battleship. There's no way I'm sticking around when I'm getting shot at by various different tier 8s. And you can see the gap in the smoke screen there, which is why I'm no longer detected. But there's a North Carolina shooting at me. There's a Miyoko shooting at me. I'm not going to hang around here and just be a target for them. There goes the fire from the North Carolina. And turn and narrowly avoid every single one of his shots. And then, whoa, torpedoes in the water. Engines full of stern. Rudder hard as starboard. There's a Benson in that smoke screen. Yeah, I don't think so, Mr. Benson. Uh, <laughs> he would have just deleted me from the game if I hadn't been paying attention. But I was. So, not today, Mr. Benson. Not today. So, that Benson's obviously popped all of his torpedoes. And I'm not sure what the reload is on the Benson's torpedoes tubes, but it's not that good. At the same time, I don't really want to sail down a narrow channel like that, but our Benson's going in after him. And he's uh, hemmed in on both sides by the Benson attack from one side and our Amagi on the other side. And look at that torpedo drop. Battleship drivers, you will just keep sailing in straight lines, won't you? <laughs> that North Carolina almost got himself deleted. Lovely attack there from our carrier. 
There's the Benson. He's been spotted. He's already taken hits. A Margie on one side of him. Friendly Benson on the other side. He's got nowhere to go. Um, so he basically gets himself blasted out of the water. And I come around the island and start shooting up the enemy cruisers. Choice of two enemy cruisers to shoot at, loading the armor piercing because they're just cruisers. Got a York, got a Cleveland. We're going to go for the Cleveland because he's sailing sideways on, so he's going to be a much, much easier target to hit. Arm piercing loaded, shots out. First salvo. Yeah, not an awful lot, but I know I've got the range now, and he's not maneuvering that much. Second salvo, not much damage. Third salvo goes in, that's more like it. 3,400. <laughs> Another 2,600. And it's only now that he actually starts changing his course. And I let him get away. I think, well, I'm not the only one shooting at him. Surely he's done. And I switch fire to the York. And that turns out to be a bit of a mistake. Because while the York is now closer and I can do just as much damage to him, doing anything between one to two, two and a half thousand per salvo, the Cleveland actually gets away. So, bit of a miscalculation there. But there's no way the York is getting out of here. He is done. Come on. Oh, not quite enough to kill him. And, well, he's out of it. And now I appear to have made a bit of a miscalculation. Because I'm stuck right out in front here. And there's a Colorado. The Cleveland sends a few parting shots my way. And I have a look at the scores and I think, well, yeah. We've got two of the flags, we're capping a third. We outnumber them. I'll go for the Colorado. Turns out to be a bit of a mistake. Now... I should hasten to add that I wasn't actually expecting to survive and or kill the Colorado here. I mean, he's got like three times as much health as I have, and he's a battleship, and I'm a cruiser. And the closer I'm getting to him, the more likely he's going to do some serious damage to me. All I really wanted to do was just rack up the damage done to get the maximum amount of experience and credits out of this battle, particularly the experience, because I'm grinding my way up the Japanese and American cruiser lines. But I expected to at least do some damage to him. And I just didn't. Now, my first couple of shots are okay. I set him on fire. I do a decent amount of damage. He immediately extinguishes the fire, so I think, yeah, cool. My next salvo sets him on fire again, but his damage control consumable is still active, so the fire instantly goes out. And from that point on, this guy just refused to burn. And I just couldn't do any damage to him. Look at this. It's nothing. This is high explosive. Striking a superstructure. And I'm knocking out anti-aircraft guns, but that's no good to me. Okay, that salvo actually went into his belt armor, so no surprise, no damage there. He reloads. I managed to get away with it, but you can see these shots actually going into the superstructure of the ship, and all they're doing is knocking out secondary batteries, anti-aircraft guns. They're not actually doing any damage, and I'm Starting to wonder, would I not have been better off actually just firing the armor piercing into the superstructure of the ship? I mean, not the belt armor, obviously not going to penetrate with the Cleveland's guns, but that was really, really surprising. I'm pretty sure I would have gotten better results there if I'd been firing, counterintuitive though it may sound, if I'd been firing armor piercing into his superstructure at that kind of range, because, well, I've had very, very good results with the Mikhail Kuchizov, the Tier 8 premium Soviet cruiser, which has similar pop guns to the Cleveland. They're not particularly high caliber guns. But firing armor piercing into the superstructure of battleships, uh, I've done some pretty impressive damage numbers with that thing. So the next time I get into that kind of situation, because it is a learning process after all, um, the only stupid thing is if you do something and it doesn't work and you keep trying it. So the next time I'm in that kind of situation in the Cleveland, I'll try my luck with armor piercing instead and see what kind of difference that makes. Well, anyway, we won that one quite handily, and I earned 7,000 experience out of it. Obviously, I was flying various different signal flags that boosted the amount of experience I earned. It was only a 1,500 base experience match, which isn't bad for a Tier 6 cruiser in a Tier 8 match. Next, I jumped into the Atlanta, and I do like the Atlanta. I thought I'd take the old catapult launcher out for a spin and see how I did. And while I didn't have a particularly great game in it, there were some very, very... I want to say amusing... Um, but I think the correct term is going to be predictably depressing results. <laughs> Do you remember the torpedo drop on the North Carolina in the first battle? Yeah, it wasn't a fluke. People still insist on sailing in straight lines when there are torpedo bombers and destroyers around. Watch this. Initially in this match I thought, yay, there's a carrier on the enemy team, I'm going to escort the battleships. Uh, and as luck would have it, the carrier actually sent his initial strike 
at uh, friendly ships right on the other side of the map. Down there, however, there is a very, very sneaky enemy destroyer. It's a Fubuki, and he's very, very good. And I get my first hint that he's down there, around about now. Turbids pops up. I'm not in his detection range. I haven't fired my guns. And around about now, somebody spots me. There it is. And that's when I realise that there is a destroyer down there somewhere. So I'm spotted. There's a Turpitz over there. I need to start dodging and weaving. That Fubuki is about to start making his presence known. What do you mean, Jingles? I mean that. That's a pretty clear indication that there's an enemy destroyer down there. Engines full astern, rudder hard as starboard. I managed to avoid his torpedoes. The North Carolina I was sailing with, not so much. Then I take a citadel from the Turpits, and suddenly, well, after having set that Auber on fire, I decide, screw this, I'm getting out of here. You can forgive the North Carolina for getting torpedoed there, because at that point there was no actual indication, other than my spider sense going off, that there was an enemy destroyer down there. From that point on, however, nobody has that excuse. And here they come again. It's the Babuki again. He shifted position from one channel to the other. He's reloaded his torpedoes and he sent a second spread against the same North Carolina. He's determined to finish him off. And he doesn't quite finish him off, but he gets him with one good solid torpedo hit there, possibly two, and leaves him on such low health that he gets finished off by an hour. So from here on in, everybody has to know that there's a destroyer down there. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Watch and be amazed, or not amazed, depending on how much World of Warships random battles you've actually played. Check out the Budjeni there. Yeah. There's a destroyer down there, you know. <laughs> how can you tell, Jingles? Look at the Nagato. He's not even trying, and he doesn't even have the excuse that he didn't know. There's a friendly cruiser just got deleted right in front of him. As well as the North Carolina, and that Budjeni is the enemy for Bookie's first actual kill, although he's done about 60,000 torpedo damage up until this point, but that's the first ship he's actually sunk. Now, remember that Nagato, he just watched a ship get torpedoed into oblivion right in front of him and then sailed right into the same torpedoes himself without even trying to turn. And remember that that Fubuki, because I've just watched him do it, so I know he loves to launch torpedoes down one channel and then scoot off down to the next one in the time it takes him to reload and launch further torpedoes down the next channel. Gee, I wonder if he's going to do it again. Somebody remind me what it means when you see a bunch of red dots in the water. It means you're too late! <laughs> there goes the Nagato. Which was completely inevitable, of course. Fubuki did it again, exactly the same tactic, picked off another oblivious victim. And you know, every time I show this sort of thing in a World of Warships video, there's always somebody there in the comments saying, gee, Jingles, how do you get these idiots? I mean, <laughs> it's... Uh... Every time I play a game of World of Warships and I try to sink a battleship with torpedoes, it's like the battleship's being driven by evil Knievel. Uh, <laughs> they just won't stay still. Guys, I, I don't know, I can't explain it. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm especially lucky, or unlucky, depending on your perspective, but I see this happen every time I play random battles in World of Warships. For now, I'm looking at those scores and not feeling entirely confident. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to lose this match, particularly since, well, <laughs> they've got almost double our score. They've got more ships. There's a bunch of enemy ships closing in from behind, and they're about to start capping our flag, and I'm in an Atlanta, and I'm in open water, which is a bad place to be in the Atlanta. You really need the cover of islands in this thing, but that Turpitz up ahead, he's run out of friends. So screw it, I'm going to kill me a Turpitz. Now he's just extinguished the fire, and that's good news, because it means if I can set him on fire, and I'm in an Atlanta, um, that fire's going to keep burning. So I close in. And I'm a small target, and yes, I could be firing more shots at him if I would turn the ship sort of sideways on, but then he'd sit down on me and he'd just put me on the bottom. I don't need to. I've got enough guns at the front and enough rate of fire. There we go. Set him on fire astern midships. Shift my aim forward. Come on. Nope, a little bit too much. He's not going very fast. Adjust my sights. Want to set him on fire up front as well. There it is. So he's now burning in two separate places, at least, from the shots that I've put into him. And I'll take another hit. And again, I don't really care. And yes, the enemy team are now starting to cap our flag. But I'm in Atlanta. There's not an awful lot I can do about it in open water. They'll see me coming from a mile away. 
the guns on this thing only have destroyer range. Um, you really need to be taking advantage of the cover of islands in order to make the most of this thing, but I am going to kill me a Tirpitz. I'm definitely going to get him. I'm coming in the range of his second... Well, I've actually been in the range of his secondary gun batteries for a while, but bang, there we go. And he manages to give me a little parting kiss before he goes down. Uh, and I'm pretty much done now. But that Fabuki isn't. He's about to strike again. So, I'm now dead and I'm watching the battle from the perspective of this Derpitz, and somebody remind me what all those red dots in the water mean. Now, you'd think, <laughs> at this stage of the game, we would have established that there's an enemy Fabuki down there, because this is now the fourth target that he's killed, using exactly the same tactics from exactly the same positions. He nailed another friendly cruiser while I was engaging the Tirpitz, so he's now on four kills. And he's not done yet. <laughs> this Auber over here, um, he played well. I've got to give him some credit here. Check out this parting shot against that Colorado. There it is. And... Bang! Nailed him. And I thought for a brief moment that we might actually stand a chance of winning this game. I'm going to send him a compliment. He played well. But that Fabuki, who has still not yet been spotted this entire game, has other plans. I followed up the compliment to the Auber by warning him in chat that there's an enemy destroyer down that channel. And you can see the Fabuki for the first time is actually out to pop his smoke. And the Auber does dodge the torpedoes, but hey, who'd have guessed? Apparently... Japanese destroyers also have guns, <laughs> so... <laughs> Finishes off the low health Albert with his guns, and there's his fifth kill, the Kraken Unleashed Award, and there is absolutely no way we are going to win this. Uh, and we did, in fact, lose. And it's at this point I'm thinking, screw this, I'm playing the wrong ships. I need to get my destroyer on. So for my next match, I jump into the Nicholas, which, in retrospect, wasn't really the right choice of ship to pull off the same kind of stunts that the Fubuki was doing in the previous match, but... I like the Nicholas, it's a really, really good little ship. And I did get myself into a very good position here to start doing some grievous damage to the enemy team in company with that Farragut over there. Didn't quite go according to plan, however. Now, I don't want you all to think that I'm some kind of infallible World of Warships genius. Um, <laughs> far, 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 far from it. I screw up too. So, while I'm sitting here poking fun at people, for not paying attention to what's going on around them, I thought it was only fair that I show you what happened when I was in the Nicholas. I don't deserve to get away with this. But, well, who said there was any justice in the world? <laughs> so, I've popped smoke, which in itself should be an indication that there's a destroyer lurking around the corner of this island. And I'm ready to... I can't see the targets anymore, but I'm pretty sure they're coming around in this direction. I want to kill me a Cleveland. Hell, I want to kill me anything. But have you seen what's going on behind me? Look at the map. Look, look, watch this. I'll zoom in. Guys. Guys, there's a, there's a red thingy behind us. It's getting closer to the green thingy. I think we're the green thingy. <laughs> right. I haven't noticed. I'm just... Oh, I'm firing my lasers. <laughs> I'm just shooting up this Cleveland thinking, Hey, I'm shooting up a cruiser in my destroyer. And it's getting closer. And it's getting closer. And I still haven't realised. In fact, I don't think I did realise until the torpedo warning alarm went off. I thought, oh, I've been detected. Yeah, that's the Cleveland. It's not the Cleveland. <laughs> It's the Soviet destroyer that's about to rove up my arse. There he is. <laughs> Jingles, you knew. Yes, yes, I know. But somehow I managed to get away with it. <laughs> Not only did I manage to get away with it. I mean, I was actually the easier target. I was stationary in the water. I, I may have been reversing at like three knots. He couldn't have missed me if he tried. And instead he went for the Farragut. <laughs> so... Not only did I get away with it, and I shouldn't have, I really shouldn't have, but I did. But we managed to kill him instead. <laughs> Look at this poor sucker. Oh, hang your head in shame. <laughs> Jingles, you lucky son of a... Yes, yes, I know, I know. I'm not denying it. <laughs> Point blank range torpedo avoidance against a Soviet destroyer. All skill, no luck. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, anyway, shortly afterwards I get a little bit too adventurous and I take a bit of a love tap from an enemy cruiser, but I'm still floating, all systems are still operational. Spotted by aircraft, so there's absolutely no harm in leaving my anti-aircraft guns on, particularly with a friendly cruiser just off my starboard beam, and between us we make, well, it's mostly the Omaha, <laughs> who am I kidding, although I do manage to shoot one of them down. And, oh look, it's a Konigsberg and a New York. Now, the New York is about to... Well, he thinks he's going to be safe behind that island, but more on that in a moment. The Konigsberg is... I really don't know what the Konigsberg thinks he's trying to do. There's me and the Omaha are shooting at this guy. Now, the Omaha's missed with his first salvo, but he ain't going to miss with his second. There they go. Reversing. Broadside on. <laughs> in front of a Nicholas and an Omaha. Didn't work out too well for him, did it? There's a Colorado... But it's the New York I'm interested in. Now, he's obviously seen something, and he's going to try to fire, there we go, <laughs> over the island. But it ain't going to work for him, because he's too close to the island. I, on the other hand, am at the optimal distance to be able to lob shots right over the top of the highest peak of that island, and set him on fire on the other side. So he's probably going to be a bit upset about that. Now, what I wanted to do here is use the island to get close enough without being seen in order to conduct a torpedo attack on him. But... Those dive bombers spot me, and that puts pay to that plan. Now, to give credit where credit's due, this New York was not stupid. He's paying attention to the map. He can see there's a destroyer sneaking up on him, thanks to the dive bombers giving my position away. So he's turning around, and he's opening up the distance between myself and him, giving himself the maximum amount of time possible to put me down before I can get in range and get some torpedoes into him. And that's, yeah, they went for the Pensacola instead of me. Well, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. I was kind of surprised that the dive bombers didn't go for me, a low-health destroyer, but the Pensacola was a much more valuable target. And the dive bombers, in combination with enemy torpedo bombers, did manage to take him out. But now it's all hands to battle stations. We're going to get ourselves in New York. I pop some torpedoes into the water. I don't aim them all directly down the track spread them around a little bit to try to take into account any evasive maneuvers. You can see his guns are all pointing in the other direction. And it's only really his rear gun batteries that are able to actually point at me. But because he's being forced to turn the ship around, it's delaying his getting his guns pointing directly in my direction. And it's buying me some time here. Now he's seen the first spread of torpedoes, and here come his rear gun batteries, and I do take a hit, but I survive. So. He's avoided that first spread of torpedoes, and now he thinks that that's it. He thinks I've fired all my torpedoes, but the Nicholas has torpedo launchers on both sides, and I've got a second spread of torpedoes in the water. And he starts turning this way to avoid the torpedoes that he can see coming from the Farragut to his rear, but that evasive manoeuvre puts him directly in the path of three of my torpedoes, and that puts him right on the bottom. So, New York dead, there's the enemy carrier, and oh shit. It's a Konigsberg. And I thought I was dead. I mean, I have next to no health, and that's a full health enemy cruiser. I put my first shots ahead of his target track in the water, and then I notice that there's actually no smoke coming out of his funnel, which means his engines aren't running, which means he's dead in the water, which means he's AFK, which means I'm going to rack up a metric arse ton of free damage and experience against this guy at absolutely zero personal risk to myself. Hurrah! I love me the smell of rapid fire and 127mm guns in the morning. It smells like freedom. Yeah, that's right, you dirty crap bastard. This'll pay you back for Pearl Harbor. Did he say Pearl Harbor? Yeah, when Earl gets on a roll like this, it's best if you just ignore him. <laughs> oh, and I just scored a Citadel penetration with high explosive. Ah. <laughs> These Koningsbergs, they're not particularly well on the chips, are they? <laughs> I should have probably been firing armor piercing at him, you know, I'd have probably put him down a heck of a lot faster. But I've set him on fire in two separate locations. You can see the carrier scooting away there, uh, being pursued by the Farragut. And I'd have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky interfering Farragut. He's about to torpedo the Konigsberg and put an end to my fun. The dastardly... Sc there it is. Oh, you rotter. <laughs> oh, well. I'll just have to shoot up the carrier instead. He's just recovered aircraft. He's trying to get aircraft away. Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. High explosive. Look at the rate of fire of this thing. Oh no, I've been spotted. Whatever will I do? 
Um, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, what's the carrier going to do? Oh, there's the enemy. Well, the lone surviving enemy battleship. Uh, he's trying to recover his torpedo bombers, and he's burning, so good luck with that. And... Oh, there goes the Farraguts. Who's going to kill him? Me or the Farraguts? It's not going to be me if I keep shooting like that. He looks like he's slowing down. I think the Farraguts actually hit his engine from the rear. Come on, Jingles, adjust your shots. Nearly, no, no, ah, the Farragut got him. Oh well, never mind. And that's pretty much it. Lone surviving enemy battleship, Colorado, low health, and our carrier is about to see whether or not he has mastered the advanced art of turning his ship from left to right every now and then, and it turns out, uh, no, he hasn't. He's been hit, he's burning or sinking, one of the two. And I was trying to get around here to get the final shots in and ninja the kill but no nope, he's going to the bottom and that is pretty much it for that match that was a lot of fun but it was nothing just nothing compared to the next game that I played in the Minokaze the Japanese tier 5 destroyer and providing Wargaming still refused to allow me to actually show you the HMS Campbelltown tier 3 British destroyer preview video which has been ready to go for a week and the news of which is all over the World of Warships front page, but no, I'm still not allowed to show you the video, because, you know, reasons. Um, that game in the Minikaze will be the next World of Warships replay that I upload to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've certainly had fun playing World of Warships again. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.